In this video, we'll create a super cute plushie you don't love me. using basic modeling, texture painting, and hair particles to make it look real and fluffy. Now, I've got a fresh blender scene opened up. I already deleted the camera and the uh, light here. And I'm gonna go into front view here with numpad one, shift A, and I'm gonna look up this thing called an image reference. Now, this will allow me to add in an image reference, and I'm gonna add in this cute little octopus image here. And this is what I'm going to use for the actual modeling example. Now I'm going to enable toggle X-ray so we can actually see through our model here. Select the background image, so the reference image, enable the opacity in this menu over here called the object data properties. And I'm going to set the overall opacity to be about 0.05, just very, very soft, but just subtle enough for us to actually see it in the background. Now I'm going to delete the cube here as well. And I'm going to start off by adding in a round cube object. So shift A mesh, round cube. Now open up this menu here. And instead of using this operator presets default, I'm going to use this quad sphere here. So let's tap into edit mode. Let's make sure we're on face select by tapping three. And we are going to delete the entire right half of this mesh. So just select it and delete faces with X. Now I'm going to add in a mirror modifier. So let's go modifiers. Look it up. There it is. Mirror. It's already mirroring by the X axis, which is fine. Let's enable the on cage so we can actually see the faces and click them as well. And let's make sure we enable clipping because because if we don't and we start messing around with some of these faces, we can create weird artifacts with holes and stuff. But if we enable clipping, no such thing is happening. So that's a good thing. We want clipping. I'm also going to enable proportional editing. The shortcut for this is O. And if it's enabled, this icon up here will be highlighted in blue and it's now enabled. What I want to do is I want to squish this thing to make it look more like the shape of our image here. So I'm going to select all of the faces at the bottom here. There will be four. I'm going to hit G and Z and just pull this up. Now I might need to increase the proportional size, which is the area of effect for the proportional editing by scrolling up or down. Now I will increase it and just pull this up until it matches with the bottom of our image here. Now I'm also going to select these on the right here, then G and X and just pull them in something like this. So we get an overall shape, which is now almost identical to the image shape. So this is fine. Now let's add a subdivision surface by hitting control two, right clicking and hitting shade smooth. Uh, I'm just gonna decrease the overall width on the Y axis. So tap back into edit mode, select everything, hit S and Y and just scale it in ever so slightly. So back into front view here. And the next thing we want to do is you want to model all of these tentacles. I'm gonna use something called subdivision modeling. So in this case, I'm going to use a cube here Add a subdivision surface. So control two to add in this subdivision surface. I'm going to set it to three, right click and shade smooth. Now let's scale this guy down, control A and let's apply the skill. And what I want to do next, and for now, I'm just going to hide the actual body here is I want to take this cube and I want to move it around and change how it looks. So because we are using the subdivision surface, it will round everything off exactly how we want it to. So let's just rotate this, align it sort of with our uh, leg here. And let's take this face and just hit E and extrude. All right. So this is looking pretty good already. Now let's select the middle edge that we just created with the edge select and then holding alt and clicking GG and just pull this up. So overall, the shape starts to move a little bit more towards towards this conical shape down the bottom. Now let's reselect the face on the bottom here again and just scale it down ever so slightly. Select this one, scale it up and let's make sure this thing overall sort of matches the shape of the tentacle. Now, I think this is fine, but this is just one and we need eight of these. So what are we going to do to create those? Well, first of all, let's go into object set origin and let's make sure the origin is to our geometry here, which for now will be fine. And we might need to change that a little bit. Now let's add in an empty plane axis. There they are. Select our leg again, our tentacle, I should say. And let's go over here and choose array. Now I'm not going to use the relative offset, but instead I'm going to use the object offset. Now for the object, I'm going to select the empty and something should happen. Something strange is happening, first of all, and that's because this offset is taken into consideration. So we need to just use control A and apply all the transforms. So now we have two legs in the exact same position. But if we now rotate this thing, you will see we can now actually move these legs around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be eight legs because an octopus is eight legs, obviously. So for the Z rotation of our empty, let's type in 360, which is a full rotation divided by eight. And this will give us 45 degrees. And we can now create eight copies. So if we go into top view with numpad seven, let's reselect our leg here and let's make sure we actually have eight legs. And voila, they are now exactly where they need to be. Now let's re-enable the body and we have basically created the 
basic shape for our plushie. I do think that these need to move in ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna select the original leg and just pull it in and maybe down, something like that, that looks fine to me. So this is the basic shape for our octopus plushie. Now we no longer need this overall background image, so I'm just gonna delete it. Let's reselect our tentacles object and let's make sure we apply the array here. So we actually have all of these meshes included. Now we can delete the empty as well because we no longer use it for the array and we are back stuck with the body the legs here. Now let's create the eyes with a sort of similar method. So in this case, I'm going to add another cube, hit control two to get a subdivision surface. Let's crank it up to three, right click, shade smooth, scale this guy down, control A and apply the scale, tap into edit mode and let's go into top view here. Now I'm going to squeeze this thing down on the Y axis, so make it nice and flat because this will be eye of our plushie. So I've re-enabled the X-ray mode so I can actually see it here, S and Y and scale it on the Y axis until it's almost flat like this. Now let's add in another mirror modifier on this one. Mirror modifier and set it to X, which is fine. We don't need to enable clipping for this one. And now in edit mode, very important to note, do this in edit mode. We can actually just move this thing, rotate it on top view here as well, and align it with the body of our octopus. I'm just gonna move this guy a little bit up, maybe align it like so. We now have two very cute big eyes on our plushy model. Let's just rename this to be eyes. So let's select the body, let's select the legs, let's hit control J, whoops, and you'll notice one half is gone. And that's because we need to apply the mirror modifier before we do this. So with the body selected, let's hover over our mirror modifier. That's kind of a tongue twister. And let's hit control A to apply. Now let's reselect the legs, hit control J and merge them together. Now this will be our body. Finally, we want to create the mouth here, which is actually very, very simple. I'm just gonna add in a curve path, scale it down, G and Y and pull it in front of our octopus here so we can actually see it. Scale down a little bit more, tap into edit mode, select the outer two most vertices, G and Z and pull these up. Now select the other inner two vertices, S and X, and just scale these out until we get a nice curve like this. Go into side view here and align it with the face. So G and Y, pull it back, R, rotate it, and sort of line it up. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to actually make this into a mesh. So with this curve selected, let's go to object, convert, mesh. And it's now a mesh. We can now add in a skin modifier, first of all. There it is looks fine to me. Let's enable smooth shading and let's hit control two to get a subdivision surface as well. Look at that. Our model is looking super cute. All right. So with these out of the way, we want to create materials. Let's hop on over to shading. Go into front view here, select the eyes and I'm going to hit new to actually create a new material, which I'm going to call plastic. Now the material for this one will be extremely simple because we are just going to change the base color to be black and the roughness to be 0.1 and we're done. That's it. Now this is the mouth. Let's rename it to be the mouth. And let's select the same material here on the side. Voila, the mouth and eyes are completely done. Now for the body, we'll do something different. We'll use texture painting. So let's hop on over to texture painting, go into front view again. So up here, let's click on the arrow. This will show you the viewport shading, which I'm gonna set to flat and I'm just gonna enable cavity so I can still see all of the parts. Now I'm gonna create a new material by clicking on the plus icon and checking base color. Set the texture size to be 2K, so 2048. And let's set the color to be a nice pinkish tint, something like this. If you want to use the exact same color that I'm using, Using, type in FF9C86 in the X code. Now our model isn't really unwrapped yet. What we want to do before we do anything else is actually tap into edit mode. Let's go ahead and just select everything, hit U and choose Smart UV Project and just choose OK. Now let's select this color by hitting S and hovering over the color that we want and letting go of S. We now have the same color here. And I'm just gonna go and take this into the red slightly, something like this. And before we actually brush anywhere, because this will work just fine, I'm gonna enable the mirror here on the top. So if you just scroll up here, we can actually go all the way down here to the mirror and enable the mesh symmetry for the X axes. I'm going to rotate a little bit. I'm going to draw these cute, very, very cute red cheeks on the side here. Disable the symmetry and let's draw them in on a different spot, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, nor does it have to be um, especially good looking because the fur will actually cover all of this up. And the only reason we are actually doing this is to just add in a little bit more detail um, 
to the fur. So there will be a little bit more color differentiation. Draw in one more. All right, so this is perfectly fine. Now, the final thing is I want to give the tentacles a bit of a different color. So I'm gonna hit seven to go into top view, then nine to flip it all the way around. All right, so if we now select the color at the bottom here and take it more into the yellow, something like that, and we now enable X and Y symmetry for our mesh, we can just start drawing in the color. Here. Now, if we press F, we can make the brush bigger. If we press Shift F, we can increase or decrease the strength. I have made it slightly bigger here, and I'm just going to cover the entire bottom of our plushie, something like that. Let's make it a little bit smaller, and let's draw on all of these legs. And you'll now notice why we have symmetry on, because this makes our lives way easier. Now you might get some bleed through here. You don't actually have to fix this because we'll cover it up anyway with hair particles, but let's just go ahead and keep it nice and clean. So I'm just going to select the pink color again and just draw over this. Let's make sure we sort of cover all of this up. All right, so that's looking fine to me. Now with this out of the way, we can move on to the fun part and that is actually adding in all of these hair particles, which will make it look super, super nice. So I'm gonna hop on over back to layout tab. Over here, I'm just gonna call this Material Octo Plushy. And let's go ahead and enable some shading before we add in these hair particles. So we go into rendered view here. Um, you'll notice that we are still in EV and we need to change this to be uh, cycles. So the hair particles actually look like hair. So let's go into cycles here, set it to GPU, compute, enable the uh, viewport denoising and set the samples to about 128 or so. Now let's hop on over to the world shading, click on the yellow dot here, change it to an environment texture, hit open, and I'm going to choose an environment that I have over here, which is from Polyhaven. I'll put the link in the description down below. I'm going to use this Loft 8K image, which is a nice lighting and also gives us perfect reflections for our plastic beady eyes. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go over here into the particle system. Let's hit new. Now let's change this to hair and voila we get some hair going on. I'm gonna change the hair length to be about 0.2, which will give us nice and short hairs here. And let's set the overall number to be about 5,000. Now you'll notice that this is definitely not enough still, but we can increase this by using children. So if we open up the children tab and choose interpolate it, we get a bunch more. I'm gonna set this to be 30 for the display amount and let's set the render amount to be the same. If your computer starts lagging like crazy, you can leave this at 10 or leave it even lower. So the amount that you actually see in your viewport will be way less than the actual render amount. Right, so next up is we need to go into render here and we need to change the actual shading material here. Now it's using the default material that's also provided for our model, which is the uh, texture painting that we just did, which is good because we now get these nice cheeks here and we also get the spots that we painted on the back. So it is working. However, I want this to be actual hair material. So I'm gonna go back into shading here, add a new material, which I'm gonna call hair. Let's remove the principled BSDF here and let's add in a principled hair BSDF. Now let's take this and plug it into the surface. Let's leave everything default for now. Let's take this color value, drag it and release it and add in an image texture. We can now choose the actual body base color that we just did and it will use the exact same coloring, which is a good thing because we now still get all of the colors. So the red cheeks and the red spots as well, the yellow uh, part on the bottom here, but we won't have any more issues with this looking strange. If we now go into a rendered view, nothing's changed. That's because we haven't changed the material in the hair particles. So let's go back to the particle menu, scroll down to render and change the material from Octoplushy to hair. And there you have it. We now get nice fluffy hair. Let's go back to layout now and let's start changing some of these settings to make it look a little bit better. So in the children tab, there's several things that we want to do. First of all, there's this parting setting which we won't touch in this tutorial. So let's just close that off. Second of all, we have clumping. Now I do want to add a little bit of clumping. If we set this all the way to one, let me show how that looks, you will get all of these spikes. Now this looks more like a wet plushie would look. I don't want that. I want it to be a nice fluffy plushie. So I'm gonna use 0.2. Next up, we want to change the roughness. We can change a lot of things in how this fur or hair particles look. Now I want the length to be a little bit random. So I'm gonna set the random value to be 0.2. Now that's too much. So let's set it to 0.1, which will immediately improve the way this looks because we now have a lot more randomness going on. Now this is more natural because overall materials like these aren't perfectly symmetrical in all parts. So let's change that as well. Now I'm gonna set the size to be two. Let's set the endpoint to be 0.1, not even less 0.01, which will just add in a little bit of movement on all of these fur particles going in. I'm going to change the overall clump 
in the clumping value to be 0.5 because I just want this to be a little bit more. I think that looks a little bit more natural. And let's set the shape to be 1.5 here. Nope, let's just cut that out. The next thing you'll notice here is that we have the eyes and the mouth that are very poorly visible because the hair particles are everywhere. So the fur is looking kind of nice, but we need to make the eyes and mouth more visible. What we can do is we can go into weight paint. We can still uh, see all of these particles. So just scroll up and let's disable the particles here. And what we want to do is we want to create some sort of mask to tell Blender where the particles should or shouldn't be. So I'm going to draw around these eyes and immediately you'll notice that we have too little detail to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here into the modifiers, into the subdivision here, and I'm just gonna hit Control A to apply the subdivision surface. Now we'll have more geometry to work with and it won't change our texturing at all. So let's make sure we actually draw around these eyes and let's make sure we draw around the mouth here as well. Now what? Well, now if we go to the particles again, re-enable them, there they are, and scroll all the way down here to the vertex groups, we can go to the density and we can choose the group that we just created. And this will invert it, so we now only have all of the hairs on the eyes and mouth instead of on the body. So next, what we need to do is we need to go up here into weights and choose invert. And now we'll make sure that the hairs are everywhere except for our eyes and mouth. Back into shading here and we can now change a little bit of these principled hair BSDF settings. I'm going to set the overall roughness to be a little bit higher, 0.5, because it is not like actual hair, which is pretty reflective, but it's more like a plushy hair, which is more dull in its color, a little bit more rough. I'm going to increase the radial roughness to be 0.5 here as well. And let's set the random roughness to be 0.2, just to get a little bit of variation going on in roughness. Now we already have a super cute and very good looking plushie. And we are going to take this into the final step, which is a very important one. But before we do that, I'm just going to change a little bit more the roughness here. Maybe set the random to be 0.2. Yeah, I like that. A little bit more randomness is good. So if you are happy with all of your settings, we can now tweak the hair particles one final time using the actual particle edit mode. Now this is a very nice feature, but once you do this, you will lock all of this in. So you can't change most of this anymore. So if you are happy with all of your particle settings, let's go over to the particle edit mode. Now you will see all of these black lines going out of your model and these represent the actual hair particles. You will have several tools here on your left side and you can now tweak how this thing looks. So first of all, we have this comb feature and if you move it over, you can actually comb all of these hairs in a general pattern. Now, if I were to change this back to object mode, this will look very, very strange, but you will see that it's actually working. We now combed all of these particles in a nice direction. So instead of doing that, we'll reset it and we'll make it a less strength. So I'm going to turn the strength all the way down, shift F and maybe increase the overall size and just ever so slightly change this. I want some randomness going on here, but not too much, maybe a little bit around here. That's good. Now, Next, we have the smooth brush, which will make everything look smoother again. We don't want that in this case. And we have the add brush if we want to add in a few more hairs somewhere. I'm not going to do that either because we already have enough. And finally, we have the length brush, the puff brush, the cut brush, and the weight brush. Now, we don't use the weight brush in this case, but I am going to use the length brush and the cut brush. Now, the length brush will allow us to actually extend some of these hairs. So we increase this. What we can do is we can create a pretty funny look for our octopus plushie by just giving him a little bit more hair on the top here. Now, if we go back into front view here and we take these and we just comb to one side a little bit, something like that, we can actually create a pretty funny look with more hair on top. Now, I like this, it gives it a little bit more personality. So I'm gonna leave it up here. And finally, we have this cut brush and we can just tweak these hairs. Now, I like the fact that they are shorter down the side here, and especially around these legs, I'm going to make them a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to move my brush around all of these legs and just trim away these hairs. Now, make sure you don't actually delete all of them. You don't want that. But if you go for something like this, we can actually create a pretty funny look. Now, I'm going to add the length brush here, just adding a little bit more randomness again. Click it, something like that. And let's go into side view here with numpad 3. Use the cut brush again. And let's make sure these legs are also cut, something like that. And if you need to decrease the scale, go ahead with F. All right, so if we now return to the front view here, go into object mode. And voila, you now have it. We have a very, very cute plushie with nice particles going up here. So they create more of a fluffy hair up there. 
And down here we have all of these cute legs. Now you might need to fix the lighting a little bit. And there you have it. We now have a very, very cute plushie and you can create your own. In this case, I used a pretty simple model because it's uh, more convenient for the tutorial, but obviously you can create your uh, childhood plushie if you want, uh, you know, get back to those uh, old school uh, vibes. So create anything you want with these nice hair particles and this fluffy look. I want to thank you for watching. If you learned something, then please leave a like and subscribe. And I want to point out that the project file for this video is available on my Patreon. I want to thank all of my patrons, which you can now see up here for their support as it's much appreciated to keep this channel going. If you're curious how to learn this in Blender, why don't you click here?